Hey, good morning. My hair looks crazy. Um, because I do talk about Joe Rogan's podcast a lot, I thought it'd be interesting to address. I woke up to a bunch of people saying like, did you see Joe Rogan's post about his use of the N word and stuff like that? I was like, that's interesting. This is a perfect example of context. Joe in his podcast has talked about the context, talked about the N word in a context and he didn't want to just say the N word. So he said the word itself within a context, thinking that that would be okay. Well, it's not okay. According to you know society, but it's a really interesting concept because what I actually learned, one of the ways that he explained it in the podcast, I remember him saying, he's like, what are words anyway? Cause he's like a questioner, right? He said, what are words anyway? He's like, Words are just sounds you make with your mouth to convey a meaning. So if my meaning is trying to quote a USC professor that was fired for saying a Chinese word that sounded like the N word, is that like, what is that? That's an interesting story, by the way. So it, it's as we, as we kind of are, are using Joe Rogan as like the lightning rod, he's the lightning rod for all these kinds of concepts. One of them that's really important is context. Uh, what was the context of Neil Young in, the in 1980 when he used the F word referring to the fact that the person behind the, the counter at the grocery store might be an F word and touch your groceries. And if they touch your groceries, you might get AIDS. Like, what's the context of that? But people learn and they grow. And that's an important part of why I talked about cancel culture being bad. But... Within this context, another thing that's very interesting is the best gift. I've been teaching for 15 years, gotten a lot of really um, meaningful gifts from students. The best gift I have ever gotten from a student, I got about three years ago, and it's from one student that had help. But while I'm teaching my class, I am like a, a performing chimp in front of, the, in front of the, the classroom. Like I am jumping around. I'm trying to get them to pay attention to me. I, you know, teenagers don't want to hear about the stuff that I'm talking about. You know, a 16 year old in Los Angeles does not care about World War One. They don't care about how many senators there are in the United States Senate and stuff like that. So I am constantly trying to just keep their attention, keep their attention, keep their attention. And I go off on crazy tangents. Uh, when I was student teaching, my, uh, my master teacher said, you're like a jazz musician. You go off the sheet music and then you go over here and then you bring it back to the sheet music. Uh, so within that realm, the greatest gift I've ever gotten from a student was this thing that said, Mr. Roosh out of context. The whole year I was watching me sit, sat in the back and he would take these like notes. And what it turned out to be was things that I've said taken out of context. Sometimes it was quoting someone else. Sometimes it was pretending to play a character, whatever it is. It is horrible. It's horrible. I don't think the N words in there, but it's horrible. And it's all hilarious because take it out of context. It sounds really, really bad. There's a whole bunch of them in there and reading through it is hilarious. And I go, wow, if you take any of this out of context, I might get fired. But in context, it makes perfect sense. And I could explain every single one of them within detail. And sometimes the explanation is, I'm just wild trying to get people who are falling asleep to just start laughing or to just pay attention. I don't think I used anything hateful or anything like that because I don't, I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> like, and also I am not an idiot in front of the class. I guess I'm, maybe I am an idiot sometimes in front of the class, but I'm not an idiot enough to say like mean, angry things. But honestly, my mind doesn't even go there. I've done videos before about like why I'm not racist and stuff. So I don't think you're going to find a, uh, a clip of me saying the N-word, but who knows? You might be like the USC professor and you might see a clip of me saying a word that sounds like it. Like I have said the word niggardly before as a, <laughs> as a way to uh, address the word that the, the definition means stingy means stingy. It has nothing to do with black people. The uh, etymology goes back like, you know, way different branch than anything that has to do with racial stuff. Anyway, um, and I'm not trying to go viral. Okay? I don't want to be instant famous. I'm trying to teach, I'm trying to teach here. Okay. But that was the greatest gift I've ever gotten. And there's a whole bunch on there. And one of them on there, I will explain here. One of them on there is, is especially interesting to me. It is, the quote is, my experience with naked boys is largely positive. That's the quote taken out of context, right? I'm a school teacher. That sounds like a pedophile. 
Well, the context of that was when I was in Poland um, uh, on, a, on a trip going through a whole bunch of, of Holocaust camps and things like that, uh, we watched a movie called Escape from Sobibor. It's a horrific movie about the Holocaust. There's scenes in that where like a Nazi will grab a woman's baby out of her arms and squeeze it to death and things. And um, it's horrific. I was watching this while I was going to, from like Auschwitz to Hemlo to Treblinka and stuff like that. So I was affected. Um, at the time I had a two-year-old and a four-year-old. And, uh, and there's a scene in the movie where all the, the Jews are lined up to go into the, the, um, the gas chambers and they're naked as they were. And one of the, a little boy maybe five-year-old boy, starts running from the group. He starts running. And the Nazis take out the German shepherd. The German shepherd's yelling and barking and barking. And they release it off the leash and, the, and it runs down the boy. And the scene is a little naked boy running and then a, a German shepherd just running him down and tearing him apart. And it really affected me. And I was like, well, well obviously, like, this is going to affect everyone. Anyway, that scene in particular affected me a lot. And the reason is because... My experience with little naked boys. I have three boys. I have now. I have a seven-year-old. I have a, a my um my middle one is going to turn five uh, tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and then I have a five-month-old. Mac just was born. And when I see little, if you have little boys, you know that they do crazy stuff. They pretend that their penis is a guitar. And they they run from from the bathtub. Even though I tell them don't run because the floor could be wet. They run from the bathtub to their room to get into their pajamas and stuff like that. So yeah, there are little naked boys running throughout my house. And these are the best moments of my life. Truly the best moments of my life are the moments when my kids are being vulnerable and silly and goofy. And I have little, little crazy boys in my house. And the context is when I see a, a naked running boy, the only naked boys I've ever seen running were my sons because I'm not around naked children. So... The context is, it was very real for me in the moment. I was like, wow, when I, every time I've seen a, a five-year-old running naked boy, I was like, oh, that's my kid. That's a wonderful highlight, core, beautiful moment in my life. Because that means I just gave him a bath. That means they're being silly, all of that kind of stuff. And this tainted it with um, the Holocaust. So in, in context, it's a very important story for my class. Out of context is... My experience with, na with naked boys is largely positive. So context matters. I'm not trying to excuse Joe Rogan just because he's like someone that I think is very valuable to, this, to the public discourse. It's more complex than that. It's the importance of context in general and that is what Joe Rogan's podcast is. That's why it's three hours every single day and stuff like that is because to work out these exact kind of issues. So I think we can flip this very quickly and make it something very, very positive for all of us to go, eh, we're all kind of cancelable. We all make tremendous mistakes. We make small mistakes. Context really, really matters. So uh, so I, uh, I just wanted to address that and, um, and, uh, and see, what your, see what your thoughts are.